In this lecture, we're going to begin our discussion on equal potential lines. Now, in two dimensions, equal potential lines are known as equal potential lines because we have only two dimensions. On the other hand, in three dimensions, our equal potential lines are no longer called lines, but rather surfaces because of the third axis, the z-axis. So we're only going to focus on the two-dimensional equal potential line. In two dimensions, equal potential lines represent points where the electric potential is always the same. It's equal. Now, whenever we draw equal potential lines, two things must be kept in mind. Fact number one about equal potential lines. For any particular equal potential line, the electric potential, the voltage, remains constant along that particular line. And fact number two, equal potential lines are always perpendicular at a 90 degree angle with respect to the electric field lines. So the equal potential lines and electric field always point at a 90 degree angle with respect to one another. And let's see what exactly what we mean by that by looking at the following diagram. So we have a parallel plate, we have a negative plate where we choose our voltage to be zero and a positive plate where we choose our voltage to be 80 volts. Now our electric field line shown in green will begin on the positive side and end on the negative side as shown in the following diagram. Our equal potential lines, however, will run directly across, will lie along the horizontal axis and will point at a 90 degree angle with respect to each particular electric field line. Now, in the following diagram, we only showed three possibilities for equal potential lines. So we have the 60 voltage, the 40 voltage, and the 20 voltage equal potential line. So what this basically means is if we take this topmost equal potential line, no matter what point we choose along this line, the voltage will always be 60 volts. The same exact thing can be said about this line and this equal potential line. Now, we want to explore the following question. How much work does it take to move a single point electric charge along an equal potential line from some point A to some point B? So let's suppose we take one of these equal potential lines as shown in the following diagram. We take an electric point charge and we, wa and we want to move this electric point charge from point A to point B along this equal potential line. How much energy is required to make that movement? Well, to calculate the amount of work required, we have to recall the equation for work in terms of our voltage and our charge. So the work required is equal to the product of the electric charge and the voltage difference between point B and point A. Now, before we calculate the work, let's recall what the voltage difference is. The voltage difference between any two points, A and B, is equal to the negative of the integral of the dot product of the electric field and our infinitely small displacement dl. Now, by definition of the dot product, this is equal to the product of the magnitude of our electric field, our infinitely small distance dl, and the cosine of the angle separating these two vectors. Now, what exactly is this angle? Well, let's examine once again our equal potential line as shown here. So our electron or our charge is moving from point A to point B along the following horizontal axis. And that means our distance, our vector dl, points along this axis while our electric field points at an angle perpendicular with respect to the motion. And that means the angle is 90. Now, since the angle is 90 degrees and cosine of the angle 90 is zero, that implies that this is also zero. So the voltage difference between any two points along an equipotential line is equal to zero. And because the voltage 
voltage difference is zero, zero multiplied by the charge is also zero. So how much work does it take to move a charge along an equal potential line from point A to point B? Well, it takes zero joules of work because the voltage difference is zero. So it turns out that no energy is required to move an electric charge along any particular equal potential line. Now, it does take work to move our charge between equal potential lines, but it does not take any work to move our charge along an equal potential line. So, one more example is, let's suppose we have the following point charge, positive point charge. Now, the electric field lines will begin and extend outward as shown by the following green arrows and the equal potential lines for such a field, such an electric field, are shown by the following two equal potential lines. So we see these are the equal potential lines for a static point charge. And if we take an electric charge and try to move it from point A to point B along this particular equal potential line, the amount of work that is required to move this along this curved path will be zero. Now, if we try to move our point charge from this equal potential line to this equal potential line, then that will require work because there is a potential difference, an electric potential difference between these two equal potential lines. And it's given by 20 volts because 80 volts minus 60 volts is 20 volts.